Good Saturday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a special edition update of our weather blog called Weather Overtime. Again, trying to give you the most weather information possible. And we're on a little early today because of the fact that we've got a changeable situation. The forecast has really changed since last night. If you didn't, if you did have a chance to catch Tim Simpson on News Channel 3 at 10, uh, information has really changed out there from what we're going to be seeing in the potential again for severe weather and it really has gone up in the forecast. We'll show that to you coming up here in just a little bit. We're starting a little early to kind of get as many people's attention as possible so you can watch a little bit more about what's going on out there. Time is just past about 945 on Saturday morning and keeping you updated again from our main Facebook page at facebook.com slash WREG3. Good possibility of severe weather today. That's not hyping the forecast. That's making certain you know what's going on. And again, we're going to do our best to make certain that we do not cover over, interrupt, or preempt anybody's TV station uh, favorite programs out there throughout the rest of the day or this evening. But keep in mind, when people's lives are on the line, it is necessary for us as a public broadcaster to let you know what is going on. So calling up and screaming at our producers and our directors is not going to get us off the air any sooner. It is also, again, not going to convince us to stop doing what we're doing. This is what we do to help people out. It is not hyping the forecast. For those of you who want to fling that nice one out there, this is a professional meteorologist letting you know what the potential is out there. If you don't like that and want to call it hyping, as a couple of TV stations in Memphis did a long time ago, that's entirely up to you and your opinion. But my job is to let you know what's going on, and that's what we're going to do here. So again, if you'd like to see more updates on the forecast and don't want to stick around for the whole thing, blue bar at the bottom of your screen, more weather information there. And you can check out the forecast details, including the 7 to 10 day forecast at this website address, wreg.com slash weather for more details. We're going to kind of hop around today, again, to give you an idea as to what's going on. Usually we have things a little bit more lined up, streamlined, and ready to go. We're not going to be doing that because, again, we're going to try to answer as many questions as we possibly can. If you're going to ask questions about, well, what about my neighborhood in Covington? Well, what about my backyard in Blytheville? What about my neighborhood around Mud Island? We can't answer everybody's questions, but we can give you a generic idea as to what's going on. So, again, looking at maps like this, West Tennessee, North Mississippi, Eastern Arkansas with Memphis and Shelby County right smack there in the middle. This map is a forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. That's the national agency under the Department of Commerce, which monitors for severe weather and lets us know so we can let you know what's going on. This is a moderate threat for severe weather. You can see that's decently high up the scale for right now. This is the first moderate weather zone that's been forecast for the year of 2019 so far. So that's pretty significant in showing that parts of the Mid-South are going to be in the bullseye, crosshairs, whatever term you want to use for the potential of severe weather. So roughly between the Tennessee and the Mississippi rivers, southwest Tennessee, and much of northern Mississippi. This is where we're going to be seeing the worst of the worst activity taking place. But notice this as well, that even though this is covering the area here, if you're in Dyersburg, Blyville, Forest City, anywhere around that area, you are still under a potential for severe weather. In Memphis, we're only under an enhanced risk, but that's a pretty good possibility for severe weather out there, which means basically everybody in the viewing area counties has the potential for severe weather. That's why we're trying to let you know about this now so you can get ready later on. Here's something to ask yourself. Do you know which county you are actually in? A lot of people actually do not know that. So when the warnings are issued by, again, those polygons out there that cover fractions of different counties, it's a good idea to know where you're located. If you're from Oxford but visiting, say, Covington, Tennessee, you want to know about what's going on for Tipton and Lauderdale counties and northern Shelby County. If you're from Forest City, Arkansas, and you're visiting, say, Dyersburg, you want to know what's going on there. So knowing what county you're in is going to be one of the best things that you could possibly do on this. What this means is the worst of the worst weather is going to be located here today later on. Now, this forecast is a few hours old. This will be updated here probably within about the next 90 minutes. When that happens, again, stop by our social media pages, and we'll keep you updated on that. As of just before 10 o'clock Saturday morning, so far, the National Storm Prediction Center has not issued any watches yet. So that's, again, some good news out there. What's going on right now? 
Storm Tracker 3S radar is again showing the thunderstorms from this morning, leaving the Mid-South, heading back up to the north and to the east. So we're getting those thunderstorms leaving the area kind of dwindling. The occasional lightning strike between Bolivar and Corinth right around the Tennessee-Mississippi state line. But back to the west of us, this is very telling right here because numerous clusters of thunderstorms and again, looking at a lot of lightning, a lot of activity going on here, moving up to the northeast. Now, much of this should be missing the area going west of the News Channel 3 counties. But what is concerning me more than anything else is this area of thunderstorms that's starting to develop west of Mariana into Lee and Phillips County, Arkansas. Pretty good flare-up of lightning taking place here between Brinkley and Clarendon. And that looks like it's going to be scraping its way close to around the area, close to around west of Forest City. And that, again, could be a bit of a concern out there. Hang on a second. I'm stepping off camera for a second to uh, update everything. And so far, again, it does not look like we're seeing uh, anything from the National Weather Service. Could be the possibility of very heavy rain out there and some flash flooding taking place. So that's something else that we are going to be watching. Keep in mind also that if these storms have very breezy winds, and there is a wind advisory in effect, the ground at this time is saturated. It's wet. It's not going to hold roots of a tree like dry ground can. So if a wind storm comes along and gets 40, 50, 60 miles per hour plus, trees could topple over onto power lines. So now would be a good time to make certain your devices are charged, your cell phone, uh, any emergency equipment you have may need, again, to get the batteries out there. Now's the time to get your weather radio batteries changed over to make certain you're ready to go. Because if the power goes out, and it might, considering we might have some of that wind damage going on, that's something else that we are going to have to look at out there. Let's do a quick check of the forecast to give everybody an idea as to what's going on. Uh, let's see, that's the one from last week. No idea why that keeps showing up here. Okay, there we go. Temperatures today very much on the mild side mid-70s or so with showers and thunderstorms developing and continuing into and around the area throughout the course of the rest of the day. And again, going to be very windy out there as well with wind gusts topping 30 miles per hour at times. So a little choppy out there as you drive across, especially east-west roadways, those winds pushing against your vehicle could make things a little difficult and or dangerous. All right, so what are we looking for out there? Running the numbers into the rest of the day. As we look toward about lunchtime, again, that line of thunderstorms continues its way to the northeast, and then ahead of that line, if we get any thunderstorms developing out ahead of that squall line, this is where we're going to be seeing the worst of the worst activity. The thunderstorms that form in what are called discrete cells that happen in advance of the line, that's where we may see the worst activity taking place. So again, you may have the main line developing back here. You may see more of that activity developing ahead of that line as it works its way into the News Channel 3 viewing area. Now through about this afternoon, again, the line continues to make its way toward the Mississippi River, across the Mississippi River through early this afternoon, and then leaving the Mid-South as we get into this afternoon around dinner time, sunset and afterwards, and then pretty much everything is all over with by News Channel 3 at 10. By tomorrow, neat idea, some sunshine. Let's go ahead and throw that into the mix, but Sunday morning is going to wind up being fairly cool. West-northwesterly winds bringing in dry air, so it's going to feel a lot better out there as we go into the course of the rest of the day. So what exactly are we looking for and when? Well, into the rest of the day, we should be seeing, again, the potential for the storms to arrive back to the west of us. Now, this color coding is just timing. It is not the same thing you saw with the slight, enhanced, moderate stuff. This just shows where the storms are going to show up and when. So west of the Mississippi, late this morning, early this afternoon, crossing the Mississippi River and the metro area as we go into the early afternoon hours. And then the rest of the day, the storms, again, making their way out of the picture as we go toward late this evening. So again, from Dyersburg to Corinth to Bolivar, down toward east of Oxford, Everything leaves the area after this evening and heads out of here, and we're done with it. Now, what are we looking for? Main threat is going to be damaging winds. It's going to be 60 miles per hour plus, and again, that could cause wind damage and power outages. So if you're out driving around tonight, uh, it gets dark, you're in an unfamiliar territory, keep an eye on the roadways because there could be debris in the roadways, or like we saw at about uh, Park and Getwell earlier this week, big tree down across all lanes of Park Avenue. So again, darkness, you run into that, that could be a 
pretty good injury accident waiting to happen. Flash flooding, the ground is saturated so the water runs off and collects in the streams, but that could cause the water levels to rise and spill out onto the roadways. Never drive through water-covered roadways. One of the worst things that you could possibly do out there. Now, we also see the potential of large hail. Again, the storms could develop some uh, hailstones one inch or larger. And again, that's some pretty good amounts of ice out there to be able to lift that upwards into the atmosphere. The basic rule of thumb is the bigger the hailstone, the more powerful the wind is to lift it up into the atmosphere. And that means the storm is even stronger. Now, the big thing, again, of course, what we're talking about here, tornadoes. Again, we are not doing this to panic anybody. This is never about panic. It's about preparedness and making certain that you know what to do before something like this might happen. It's one of the best things you can do by getting ready right now. One of the forecasts that we use is called the Significant Tornado Parameter, or STP. Fancy name made short into a nice little tidbit of an explanation. It takes a look at a lot of different factors to show what may happen and when. It does not guarantee a storm will produce a tornado, nor does it include anything in this forecast regarding, say, a cold front or a burst of air that might develop a new storm. It doesn't include any of that. It just shows where the best potential for developing thunderstorms that might be tornadic wind up. Taking a look at wind shear, winds going different directions. And as we go through about late this morning, northeast Mississippi is going to be one of the best spots for that. Now getting into early this afternoon, and again, this forecast also several hours old, we're still looking at this little blurb right here around Shelby County. That's got me a little concerned right past about early this afternoon. Best possibility, again, across northern Mississippi and parts of southwest Tennessee, but we could see some flare-ups along the northern side of that, and that would put it very close to the metro area. So if you're in Memphis and Shelby County, you're not out of this by any stretch of the imagination, and you really need to know where your safe place is so you can get there as soon as possible if those warnings start coming along. So something to consider there to be on the safe side. Now, through the rest of the afternoon and evening, we start to see again around I-55 northwest Mississippi through about mid-afternoon and the latest part of the afternoon, the threat starts moving back toward the east. And that again carries the possibility again of those storms making their way out of the picture. But the tornadic threat could exist around Bolivar, Corinth, back toward around the uh, Grand Junction area, uh, Savannah. You're going to be looking at maybe the possibility of that, but then as we're done, through about News Channel 3 at 10 tonight, that should do it for the severe weather, and things look very quiet into and around the area for uh, right now. Again, uh, for those of you asking at this point in time about time frame on this, again, what we're looking for is the storms to be developing, and they already have been developing, uh, eastern Arkansas, west of the Mississippi River from late this morning into early this afternoon, Mid-Mississippi Valley, the metro into around northwest Mississippi through very early this afternoon, and then passing out of the Mid-South through about mid to late afternoon, heading its way into around the area of Middle Tennessee and northern Alabama late this evening into early tonight. Now, if this storm that is causing all this rockets on ahead and gets out of here quicker, this time frame will change. Likewise, if the storm's been moving along at a pretty healthy clip, but if it slows down, and sticks around for a while, this forecast could also change. For those of you who are crying foul and saying, well, that's not accurate, how can you put that up there? That's weather forecasting to where things will change in the atmosphere, and that's my job to keep up to date with that so you know more about what's going on. So for right now, a couple minutes before 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, this is the best time frame that we can see for in and around the area. Right now is the time to get ready for action later on. You might have moved to this area from some other part of the country and have never been through a tornado warning before. Now's the time to get familiar about where to go to just to be on the safe side because again these are the type of situations that you need to know about beforehand so you're not thinking about doing things the wrong way afterwards such as take a look at the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch is a large broad area of a particular location that says that severe weather may be possible in a particular location over a particular time. It does not mean that severe weather is occurring right now. Right now warning means that again it's actually in motion, it's happening, it's been observed, and immediate action needs to be taken to save life or property. So again a watch just means a potential area over a large 
several hundred square miles could be encompassed on that. A warning is usually on a county by county basis and says a tornado has been sighted, a severe thunderstorm is occurring, flash flooding is going on, you need to take action to stay safe. And that's why it's important to know which county you are in just to be on the safe side out there. If you get pictures of video, pictures or video of severe weather, that's great. We'd love to see them. We'd love to show them on News Channel 3, on our websites, on social media. That'd be great. Big thing to consider, do not risk your life for a piece of video. It's not worth it, okay? Do it from a safe location. If you can see it, if you can show it, that's great. But what would be better is if you could report that information back to the National Weather Service as a severe weather spotter just to be on the safe side. Where's the best place to be for severe weather. Any structure you're on, you want to be on the lowest floor possible. If you're on that lowest floor, then if you're on, say, like the second or third or higher levels up there, you're more susceptible to the debris blown by the winds or the tornado. Lowest part of the ground, there's more stuff around. The topography of the land may prohibit debris from being flung around. So that's why you want to look yourself, again, a area that is going to be on the lowest portion of the ground Underground, a basement would be your best bet, but again, if you don't have a basement, lowest floor would be your best bet there. Interior section, anything like a bathroom without uh, windows nearby, a closet or a crawl space inside kitchen cabinets away from exterior walls. That's going to be one of your best bets to go to. Now, again, we don't have a warning in place right now. These are just the regular severe weather suggestions to help you know more about what's going on out there. So again, lowest floor possible. Again, for, to help the kids understand, you want to go think of a tic-tac-toe board, go to the center part of the board with the rest of the house surrounding you. That's going to be one of the best places you can be. Bathtub, even though it's made of plastic or fiberglass, that makes a very nice place to go into so you can lay down flat. You're surrounded on five sides by plastic, and that'll slow down debris as well. And if you lay something heavy on top of you, like a quilt or a mattress, that'll protect you. It'll be a nice ready-made tornado shelter for maybe... Uh, two small kids or one large adult. Some people say they don't want to get into the bathroom or the bathtub because it's undignified or for whatever reason, but it might just save your life. And again, anything away from exterior windows to where stuff could come flying on through, that's going to be one of your best bets to make certain that you're going to be safe out there. Last but not least, cannot emphasize this enough that again, <clears throat> we, excuse me, we could be looking for the potential of flash flooding out there. If you see water covering over the roadways, find another way to get to where you're going. Turn around, don't drown. Find somewhere else another way to get to where you're going. It may take time, but you will be alive, so that's kind of a nice thing to worry about. Again, it only takes about six inches to one foot of rushing water to shove a vehicle off the roadway, including large vehicles like buses, SUVs, uh, anything in the way of like semi-trailers, it can do, water rushing through has a lot of force, a lot of mass in motion right there, and it doesn't take much to get these cars and trucks swept off the roadway and you stuck in a deadly situation. So again, something to think about, <coughs> excuse me, into the area there. Again, just some suggestions for this point in time. All right, just past 10 o'clock, let's go back to our Storm Tracker 3S radar. And again, getting noisy new thunderstorms developing in eastern Arkansas and that again is going to be what we're looking for to develop throughout the rest of the morning as these storms come on through. So right now east of the Mississippi River leftover showers and thunderstorms west of the Mississippi we've got a lot more activity heading our direction including this new area that is starting to pop up into and around it looks like uh, Lee and Phillips County in Arkansas. Lee County now covered over by thunderstorms those lifting up toward Forest City, and eventually that'll be crossing the river into and around western areas of Tennessee, maybe scraping close to the area in and around northwest Mississippi, as well as well as southwest Tennessee on there. And once again, we're expecting an update from the Storm Prediction Center pretty soon in regards to a new forecast, but the bullseye for right now, moderate threat of severe weather. Again, this is the greatest chance for severe weather in and around the Mid-South area. And this is what we're going to be watching here. But remember, Dyersburg, Covington, Memphis, back toward Horn Lake, Tunica, anything outside of that area, you still have a risk of severe weather right there. But this is where the worst of the worst is going to be. And as we go, <clears throat> excuse me again, into later on this evening, this is going to be the time frame for what we're looking at. Again, Memphis and Shelby County here, eastern Arkansas, 
North Mississippi, West Tennessee. The storm's developing this morning, moving through this area, across the river through about midday, including the metro, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, clearing the Mid-South area as we go into later on tonight. Could be the possibility of all these types of weather out there for later on. Again, we'll do our best to keep the interruptions to a minimum, but when people's lives are on the line, we need to make certain that we are doing our best to let you know more about what's happening, especially beforehand, so you can get ready to go just to be on the safe side. Questions, concerns, ideas about our weather blog, please let me know. Again, austin.onic at wrhe.com. And please stay tuned for more, again, on air, if you can, online at wrhe.com slash weather. And we'll have updates on the forecast, including more information about watches and warnings throughout the rest of the day as we're able to do so. If you can get pictures of video, pictures and video of severe weather, that's great. But once again, please do not risk your life for anything like that because that is, again, not the best idea for you to be doing anything like that to risk your life for just a piece of video. It is not worth it. So, again, if you get it, great. Do it safely. That's the main thing to think about right there. Stay tuned for more throughout the rest of the morning. Time is just about 10.05 as we wrap things up. And, again, we'll keep you updated throughout the rest of the day. So stay tuned for more watches, warnings, advisories, or whatever else we can give you on News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining us for Weather Overtime this morning.